Good morning, everybody. Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Hey, what's your problem? I am Christy Stone. I'm a senior product manager here with Globant and I will be moderating today. So a couple of housekeeping items. I think that everybody can hear me, but if you ever can't, we also have the chat window that you can send comments and messages. So just let me know. I might be muting myself off and on throughout the presentation so that I don't interfere with Trisha. Uh, we're going to take about 45 minutes total for this webinar. We're going to start with a presentation and then we'll have an open Q&A session. So you are welcome to submit questions through the Q&A feature at any time. We may not be able to answer them right away and we probably won't be able to answer everybody's question, but we'll try to get to as good of a cross section as we can. As you can see on the screen, we also will share our email addresses so that if any other questions or comments or thoughts that you wanna share come up, you're welcome to reach out to Trisha or myself at any time. Um, I think that covers most of the housekeeping things. If Again, if you have any other questions or concerns, the chat window is open. I'll be monitoring that throughout the session. This is the first in a series, a webinar series that we have that is focused specifically on product management approaches and practices, which makes total sense because Trisha Servanen, who is with us today and is our presenter, has over 10 years of experience bringing her passion for understanding and helping humans to delivering digital products. So for today, she's starting out by talking about why we should focus on problems rather than just building solutions. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to her. Awesome. Thanks, Christy. So uh, let's just dive right in and get started. So our learning objectives for today are we go back one. <laughs> we uh, want to make sure that we can, by the end of this session, explain why we should focus on problems rather than solutions. Um, we want to be able to explain the difference between a problem and a solution, and then we want to be able to describe how to form customer, customer problems from data. So diving right in, first let's make sure we all are on the same page about what is the role of a product manager. So there are three goals that product managers have. One is research. We need to be able to understand our users and our market. Um, so we're going to go out. So we're going to go out uh, and do research and uh, make sure that we can understand our users and our market. We also have to make decisions. So we'll take in lots of info, uh, whether this be from our team, from stakeholders, from our users, and we uh, make decisions about that. So, um, so we're getting information from a lot of different places and ultimately taking all of that and saying, okay, what are we gonna do next? And then team building. We wanna make sure that, we're, that our team feels empowered um, and that they feel valued and that they feel productive. Though we may not be necessarily having our teams report to us, it is still uh, up to us as a member of those member of the team to be able to ensure that everyone feels like they um, are empowered to do the work that they uh, that they're there to do. And so the approach that we're going to cover today is really going to be able to help you do all three of these things. So first, let's define what is a problem and then we'll define what a solution is. And we'll talk about what the difference between these are. So a problem is a goal or an objective that a user would like to achieve, but they can't. So a goal or objective a user wants to achieve, but can't. So when I was working um, at a mortgage company many years ago, one of the biggest objections that we got was uh, clients would call in and they would say, so what's your rate? Um, and our mortgage bankers would have to, you know, then tell them the rate and, and sort of go through that objection with their um, with their sales process. And so um, it was often solved by, we would just be really out and upfront with what our rates were. The problem of course, was that we didn't always have the lowest rates in town. Um, we, uh, we competed, sure, but oftentimes other people would undercut prices, you know, as happens out there in the industry. And so when we talked to our clients, what we learned was that they, they cared about rate because they did want to spend less money. Yes, that is absolutely obvious. And they, they wanted to pay less each month. 
But one of the, 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 one of the real reasons why they would lead with that is because mortgages are complicated and uh, people get one every seven years on average. And so without a ton of experience, they were really relying on their mortgage banker to not rip them off. And going through this process, it's long. It can sometimes cost you application fees and they didn't want to get ripped off and they didn't want to ultimately get ripped off in their mortgage. So the problem that our clients were having, not necessarily was that they didn't know the rate and so we needed to build something to help them know the rate, but rather they, they didn't know a lot about mortgages and they had to trust someone that they didn't know to walk them through the process. So it was really about trust. So what's a solution? Well, a solution is a product or a process that can help a user achieve the goal or objective. So in this particular example, what we did was we built a solution that would help build trust and knowledge with our clients. And we really, we wanted them to feel like they were more in control of the process um, and that this was really something that they were helping to move forward and not just being told what to do by their mortgage banker. And so with that, we created a, um, a mortgage calculator and it had some additional features in, the, in there, but really it was a simple way for us to be able to get, um, get information out there to our clients so that they could feel like they were knowledgeable in this, um, in this process, like they were moving the process forward along with their mortgage banker. Okay, so how do you discover problems? Well, there are a couple ways um, that, uh, that I like to recommend. One are contextual interviews. So contextual interviews are where you are sitting with folks in their natural environment and you are asking them questions about what they're doing and why they're doing it. And you're really trying to understand their thoughts and emotions around what's going on for them. So you might be sitting with someone in their office and watching them use your application um, if, if, it's a, if it's a business application. And as they make decisions about what to do next, you're gonna ask them why. Why are you doing this? Why did you do this? Uh, what, what, is, um, what are you thinking about as this is happening? Um, and versus an observation where you might go out and watch people in their natural environment and um, most likely you're not knowing that they're being watched and you really wanted to see how they behave without being influenced by having somebody watch them. So a great example of this is if you really want to understand what, uh, what folks are doing and, and what their behaviors are when it comes to riding the bus, you might go stand at bus stops and just watch people, how they get on the bus. And then you might go on the bus and watch and sit up front and maybe watch folks how they behave in that way while they're paying their fares and, and, and that sort of thing. And so they're not really knowing that you're watching, but uh, you're able to get information in. And so we're gonna cover a lot of these, uh, we're gonna cover a lot more about contextual interviews and, and, and talking, to, um, talking to people in our next webinar. So definitely wanna sign up for that. But the key takeaway from this is that we're really not asking people what they want or what they think their problem is. What we are doing is we're asking folks what is going on for them at this time. And we're really trying to understand their behavior. So it's also not asking your sales team or your CS team or your CEO to tell you what people want. It's really about asking, um, asking them why they're behaving, where, why they are, and then, um, and then bringing that information back to your team and letting your team uh, use the collective knowledge that they have uh, to come up with solutions. And the thing is, is that people, if you were to ask them what they wanted, people will often talk in solutions. And it's, um, it's just how, they, how people approach uh, the world, even if they think they're presenting a problem. So I'm gonna, let's go through some examples. So, um, some solutions might be saying something like, well, Maria wants to take a picture or Maria can't create calendar appointments or she can't pay her bills online. Um, and so what are, the, what are the options that we have? If, if those were the problems that were presented to us, if, if, if that was all we went on, well then, okay, we would add, in a, add a camera or we might add an appointment creation feature some way, letting her create appointments or we might add bill pay. Um, 
it's not really getting to the core though of what is really going on for her and why she might um, be asking for those things. And so if we dig in a bit more and we, and we thought about what her problems might be um, in that she wants to preserve memories of her life, we have a lot, a lot more options, right? We could maybe create something with video or we could give her a diary or you know, a, a plethora of other options to let her preserve memories. Or if she can't get to places on time, we could simply give her a list where she could write down where she needs to be or just send her alerts rather than going through the whole idea of creating calendar appointments. Or maybe we call her um, and say, hey, you need to be in this place. Um, and so getting deep down into what a problem, uh, what, what problems our users have is really core um, to being able to make sure that we're building the right thing. And so how do we, how do, we do this? The, there are lots of different methodologies that, that, folks will, um, that folks will tell you, and all of them are probably right. Uh, the simplest way that you can get started today is by asking five whys. And I encourage you to do this throughout your life. Um, not just when you're talking to users. So when you're talking to your stakeholders and your and your uh, and your bosses and and folks that you work with on a regular basis, because that's how you can um, start to learn and become much more comfortable with this. So let's go through this right now. So if someone comes to us and they say, Maria can't create calendar appointments. Okay, so Maria can't create cal calendar appointments. Why does she need to? Well, they might answer, um, because she has to start making sure that she makes it to her meetings on time. Okay, cool. So why is she so focused on this? Well, Maria often gets to meetings late. Okay, well, why does she struggle with this so much? Well, as it turns out, Maria gets really caught up in what she's doing and forgets that she committed to a certain time. Well, why does this happen to her? What is, what is special? about Maria, why does this keep happening? Well, because she doesn't keep track of her time commitments. Well, why not? Well, because she thinks that she's good at remembering. She thinks she's good at remembering and she really won't admit to herself and to others that she gets really focused on what she's doing and she needs to be more adamantly interrupted. And so when we get to that answer, when we get to the fact that she's really um, not that great at remembering things and that she gets super hyper-focused on things, it becomes much more about interrupting her than it does about creating calendar appointments. And so our solution that we might create um, becomes much broader and it becomes much more helpful, um, which means Maria is gonna keep coming back to our product because we've actually helped to solve her problem rather than just giving her the solution that, um, that uh, has come to mind. And so why should we work to solve problems rather than solutions? And this really comes down to, to sort of what we were just talking about is that the reality is, is that people will often think in context. So they think about things, um, they talk about the, the issues that they're having within the environment that they're used to. So they're aware of calendars existing. And so they think, oh, well, that sort of helped me and your product sort of helps me. So I'd really like to be able to do this with your product. And, and they think that that might be the way to solve the problem. Um, and the, the issue is, is that you're then stuck with just their version of what might solve the problem and you have this sample of one. Um, and so if, if you, whereas if you're talking to lots of other people and you're really digging in to um, what, what problem uh, these folks are having, you might be able to take this and, and make it more than just a sample of one because you're really digging into what's going on underneath for them. The other thing is that people will often assume um, what they need um, and, um, and that they know all the possibilities that are available. And so they make these assumptions that, uh, that they know what's best for them and that they know exactly how to solve it. Um, and, when, and they're not often aware of what's really going on internally for them. People will often it's not necessarily lie to themselves, but people will often sort of hide the things that might make them uncomfortable. Um, and so they'll assume that they know 
exactly what they need and exactly what they want. And finally, the, the last really compelling reason about why, um, why we should really focus on problems rather than solutions is that um, the more that we know about our users, um, the, the more innovative solutions and ideas that we can come up with. And so we really, product development is really about learning and it's really about learning about our users and our, and our business um, and all the folks around us. And by digging in and asking why, we have um, a lot bigger opportunity to really learn and understand. And going back to the very first thing we talked about, to make better decisions. And, and that's really what, what we're here for. The key is, um, is that we really want to make sure that, um, that we work to understand our users' problems. So one of the most overused quotes in product development, and, and yet here I am, I'm throwing it out there, I'm going to say it anyway, is if I had asked them what they wanted, they would have said they wanted a faster horse. And that, that of course, is the quote by Henry Ford. Um, and it's often misunderstood that when talking to users, we should ask them what they want. And so we don't want to ask them what they want. Um, we, what we want to do is we want to observe their behavior and ask them why they behave that way. Because our best solutions, and maybe it's the Model T or the assembly line like that, um, really come from our teams that truly understand our problems. Uh, and really truly understand the problems that are worth solving. So thanks. Well, thank you, Tricia. I, a couple of things that, that really resonated with me when you were talking is looking at the five whys and what mm. a problem really is, is that it's often more on the emotional needs side than the physical action side. And I think that's, a great delineator, right? You know, if, if somebody's saying, I want to make a phone call, that's a physical action. But I think that that might mean, I think that might be a good indicator that we're talking about a solution where yeah. I need to call my dad because I need to make sure he's okay is mm -hmm. more amorphous, but it's really more of the need. And like you were saying, opens up those possibilities to, uh, to doing things different ways. And, and coming up with a truly innovative solution. And like somebody said in the chat window, it is very much uh, connected with the lean startup method. So mm, yeah, and one of the things we talk about um, in in product coaching. Um, so uh, here at Globant, we offer we offer product coaching um, to where we can come out and, and sort of teach some of these these um, philosophies, I suppose. Um, and one of the things we talk about is motivations. Um, and really learning and understanding folks' motivations. And so um, you can, uh, if you go to Wikipedia um, and look up, I think it's, I think it's motivations is I think the, the actual uh, Wikipedia article, you'll see that there's a list of like halfway down the page, there's a list of all these motivating factors. And what's remarkable is that we don't often think about those things. We don't often, it, it doesn't come up to, come up for us on a normal basis. But those are in fact the things that, um, that drive us to do, to, to create and take action throughout the day. We were chatting yesterday and, and we were talking about, so imagine that you're walking down the street and you see a sign that says sidewalk closed ahead. You don't think about um, necessarily um, how to get around or like, um, you know, why that sidewalk is closed and you don't necessarily think about that sign being there and whether it's the right sign and, and giving you the information. You're really trying to figure out, okay, well, how am I going to get across the street, right? Because you need to get to where you need to go. That's really your motivating factor is getting to where you need to go. Um, and so thinking about those types of things and really digging in is where we can, is where we can really start to, to like we said several times now, create really awesome solutions. Awesome. So one question that I have is there are other people in the organization who do what is called research, right? Mm, and yeah. it's been pointed out that this is similar to customer development. It's, you know, it's got some things in common with research. How do you see it interacting with those particular disciplines? Sure. Yeah. So I love when research folks are on my team uh, because that means that they can totally lead um, 
the customer research uh, portion, which is awesome because they certainly are way more skilled at it and, and, and focused on it. So um, please, all of you research folks, join the team. Um, and uh, the, the difference between product management and research is really that when the research folks um, are, are there, when we have the luxury of having a research person, we need to make sure we're there to observe um, and that we're there to take in um, the information and that we um, and that we can uh, then use that information later because the thing about the research folks is that they're they're most likely not in the um, big stakeholder meetings or they're maybe not talking to the de development team um, on a daily basis whereas product management is really um, at the center of users and uh, and our, our business folks and our development folks. And that includes design and QA and, and, and our developers. Um, and so we need to be able to take in all of that information to make really great decisions. And so we need to be a part of research um, and we need to be able to ask good questions of our researchers and talk to them about what's going on. We need to be able to uh, part potentially participate in the research to make sure we're getting back what we need to be able to make decisions um, and to really guide our, our, our development team um, towards creating a product and and uh, and giving them a vision that makes sense and being a part of that is is really key awesome well we've had some great questions come in one that I think that we've talked about before because it's kind of the sticky wicket is you know sometimes ideas are brought to us and they're brought mm -hmm. by sponsors who already say no 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 i know what i want this is this is what we're moving forward so if we really want to take this approach of focusing on the problem rather than the solution how do we handle that situation sure so one of the things when um one of the things when i'm teaching that uh that comes up over and over and over again is that in product management it depends um, it really depends on a lot of different factors. The biggest thing to understand is that we're working with people. People are involved in this entire process. So they, there are users, our stakeholders, um, and our team. And so really understanding people is one of the core uh, parts of our, of our job. And so when folks come to us and they're like, I want this thing, um, to really understand what's motivating them you have to know about them and learn about them. And so asking them questions. Okay, well, it might be going back to those five whys and asking them about why that product is great, or it might be why they think that product is great and asking them or why that idea is great. And so um, really digging into those whys and, and getting and asking that question um, as many times as you can. And so there are gonna be some people out there who do not respond to that in any way. They stick their, their heels in the ground and they're like, stop asking me why. Um, just do the thing that I said. Yes, those people exist, absolutely. Um, and so there are a couple other techniques that you can do um, out there, which is um, you might be able to build something super, super cheap that, um, and when I say cheap, I don't necessarily mean cheap in dollars. Sometimes it means cheap in um, code or it means like doing a paper prototype or, or something of that nature. Um, build something super cheap, get it out there and, and learn. And if you're going to go down that route and, and going to go down that path, then the, the thing that you need to make sure that you do is that you can track it and that you can measure whether or not it succeeds because you can then take that information and you can bring that back to um to your team i was working one time with um with a stakeholder who they really 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 wanted us to integrate with this other product inside of our product like it was something that they were super passionate about and no matter how many times i had asked them why and talked through it with them it was it was not changing at all and we were going out and we were talking to some users um, and we were doing this anyway and so what we did was we ended up taking that product that um, that our stakeholder 
Holder had wanted to integrate with. And we ran users through it. It wasn't our product, but we just did a little bit of a usability test on it. And as it turns out, um, our, our users could not use it. They were so frustrated um, and they struggled all the way through. And so uh, we were able to take that information back to our stakeholder and show them compelling reasons about why we shouldn't, um, why we shouldn't move forward with, with that. Um, particular integration and of our interview our interview I think was about an hour and a half to two hours which with, with each user um, we had a bunch of other stuff to do in those interviews um, this took up about 20 minutes so a pretty small portion um, considering um, to be able to get the answer uh, and, and bring it back to our stakeholders Nice. So more of that understanding human behavior at the stakeholder level as well as at the customer level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so another question came up, which is, is this type of approach and investigation of understanding the problem limited to a certain phase of product development? I think that it's natural to associate it with the discovery phase, right? When we're building a new mm. product. But is there what are your thoughts on that? Like, is there a time where it's not appropriate to think about the problem? Um, so again, it depends. <laughs> um, it, it really, uh, I, I think that we, we always need to be thinking about problems. So, uh, full stop, we always need to be thinking about problems, um, that our users are having and try and solve for our problem, try and solve for problems rather than simply building a solution for the sake of building a solution because, um, because we want to, uh, that said, there are times within the development cycle where um, we may not, where we may realize that we didn't know enough and we didn't um, dig in enough uh, and into asking um, our users why or asking our stakeholders why. And we're far, we're, we're far along within this development cycle. And, and that is where we really need to decide, okay, does it make sense to continue and succumb to the sunk cost fallacy that that going forward is and continuing down this path and getting it out there is better than stopping like full stop and saying, let's pivot and do something different. And so it's it's really figuring out what again is the cheapest way to learn something. So is it that you continue to develop for some short period of time so that you can just get it out there and you can see how users react to it and get some data? Or is it that you stop, go do some research for a week so you can learn enough to make some small tweaks to what you have or to stop completely and, um, and really just pivot, throw it away, do something different. And so that really depends a lot on your business on um, the project and again how far along you are in that project and what it means to stop um, and what it means financially and what it means to team morale um, and what it means to your success frankly as a product manager nice i'm scrolling through the questions now we're getting quite a few so pardon me while i, <laughs> I move through um some interesting questions about product management in general so Ooh, okay. yeah like um there's there's a really good one that i would actually like to touch on before we get to that though which is about changing a team's mindset because i know this mm. is something you and i talk about a lot and i think you've touched on it a bit in some of your answers already but um, something that I think, and again, we've had, we have conversations about this stuff all the time. So I know that we've had, had conversations about the importance of bringing other people along with you, but also mm -hmm. some of the challenges in that. So what have you found to be successful in helping to bring your team along with you? If you're, if you find yourself on a team that maybe has been super focused on delivery and solutions and features to really get them to help think about the whole product and approaching it from this perspective. Um, I, I think it really comes back to probably the example that I, that I gave with, um, with talking about stakeholders. Um, it's, it's really about letting them um, see for themselves. So it might be inviting your development team to come along 
for some of the user interviews that you're doing. Um, there's absolutely no reason why they can't be a part of that. They may not have to ask, they may not ask questions. It may just be that they're observing what's going on, but really seeing what people say um, and that they are in fact frustrated with a product is super compelling. Um, it may be letting them build something cheaply um, and uh, not asking them to commit to something, um, commit to this time frame to, to get these things out and always focus on, on um, delivering something uh, very specific to the market instead letting them try something new for, for a short period of time. I think in Scrum they call that a spike. Um, and so uh, it's really about letting people bring their collective knowledge uh, to the team and really helping them to feel empowered to come up with different solutions. And so as, as product managers, what I found as a product manager, what I found is that when I come to a team with a solution, um, that is when they feel really like they don't want to uh, play along and they don't really want to participate. And so if I come to them and I say, you know what, our users, they're having this problem. Um, and I say, help me, help me figure out how to solve this. That is when I will often get way more buy-in from my team um, because then they're the geniuses as they are uh, that get to come up with all of these great innovative solutions that you know are things that I've never thought of um, and that I couldn't possibly think of because they're in it every day um, in the technology and in the design and and um, and really learning. Awesome. So to go to those. Um, Sorry, I'm distracted. Somebody raised their hand and I'm, <laughs> I see you, I see you. Um, but just to go with that broader question, which I think is a great one, especially with, you know, we've talked a lot about even what is a product manager? And there are lots of other disciplines that are related or connected or potentially on the path, like business analyst is a big one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think historically, especially in software, product managers have come from a lot of different parts of the organization. So what would you say a product manager is and what are some of the key skills that they bring to this role? Uh, that's a big question. Uh, <laughs> so what is a product manager? Well, that really goes back to, let's just, let's just go right back here. So uh, there's someone who, again, we understand our users in our market. Um, we make decisions. Um, and then we help our team to feel empowered, valued, and, pro and productive. Okay, so cool. That seems really, uh, really great and really ethereal. So, so what do we do? What do we physically do? Um, a lot of it comes down to listening. We are, we are literally listening and taking in information. So I know that doesn't necessarily seem very tactical, but listening, um, is in fact extremely tactical because you need to talk to your stakeholders and hear them and ask them why and what their motivations are and really understanding their behavior so that you can guide your team so that you can then give information back to your team that says this is why we're doing this this is why this is important um, and talking to users and the same thing um, ultimately at the end of the day what we are responsible for is is making decisions. And it's not coming up with ideas. That is absolutely not what our role is. Our role is to take all that information in and then decide, oh, we should move forward. And sometimes that, that information is recommendations on what we should do um, because we're not coming up with all of it. So what else do we do? Yeah, sometimes we write user stories or we might make a journey map or we might um, do a competitive analysis. That again is all a conduit to us being able to make decisions. And so there are lots of tools in our toolkit um, that we can use to, uh, to, to get to the point of where we make decisions. Does that answer the question? 
Uh, I thought it was a great answer. We'll see what people have Thanks. to say <laughs> in the chat window. Um, you know, because Perfect. there were additional questions that came up about the, the separation of product between product manager and project manager and how technologically involved does the product manager have to be. And again, sure. we've had these conversations, you know, I mm -hmm. think that um, as, as the person that focuses on the decisions and the problem, that the answer to that is it depends. Right. Mm -hmm. It depends on what the team needs and and what you need to make those decisions to move forward. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, yeah, I mean the so project managers notoriously are responsible for um, budget timeline, resources, communication about budget timeline and resources, and um, and so as product managers, we need to communicate about other things and we need to um, measure success and we need to talk about. Um, talk about problems and how technical we are. As you absolutely just said, Christy, I think the key is, is the, are the problems that you're, that you're talking about, are they, are they super technical? If you don't know the information like that your users are talking about, are, are you going to be so completely lost that you can't move forward um, without having um, somebody there to, to help you along? Okay, maybe you should be a bit more technical. Um, do you need to know how to code? No, I don't. I, I am adamantly against the fact that product managers might need to code or even no SQL. Um, I, I don't think that we need to do that to be able to understand problems and make decisions. Absolutely. And I think that you and I have talked also about the different paths that people take mm -hmm. to become product managers. You know, I was a games producer and I worked in the lab and you, you know, a lot of, um, well, you just did it, right? You just started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> My boss was like, was like, we should build an app. And I said, I'll do it. And that was how <laughs> I became a product manager. <laughs> I love it. And I think that that's not uncommon in. No, not at all. Yeah, so many people, I met somebody who has a master's in social psychology, so she came to it from academic research, but yeah. has been able to apply those skills across the board. Um, what are some of your go-to tools and tool sets that you use? And since we're speaking specifically about identifying problems, right, the five whys is a great one. Is, are there any resources that you recommend to help dive into more of the nuances of that? Are there other approaches that people could take, especially if they don't have a research team to help them? Um, well, I don't think you need a research team to be able to ask the five whys. And that's why I was saying that I think uh, that you should, that, that folks should practice this on, on a normal basis. Being curious um, has served me better uh, than any other learning that I have ever had um, in my career. Um, and so constantly being able to ask questions and listen more than, than talking, I think is, is honestly one of our greatest, um, one of our greatest tool sets um, uh, in product management. Um, you know, there are lots of other ways that we can present out information, whether it be um, working through a lean canvas or whether it be doing things like a competitive analysis where we go out and actually get hard quantitative data um, that can help us um, or, or looking at analytics um, in Google Analytics or, or any of the other platforms. Um, and those can help guide us on, um, on where we might look for problems, um, but it doesn't, it's not going to get us to the, um, to the real root of what's going on without talking to users and asking them why to really understand their behavior. And the thing is, is that you don't have to have a research team to go and talk to users. You can go up to Starbucks and, um, and talk to some folks in line and ask them about, you know, why they use their phone in the way they do or why they're paying in, in this way. And you certainly don't have to only ask questions about your product. You can ask products about, or questions about competing products in the market and understand why folks are doing those things. And so you can talk to, to anyone who might, um, who might fit uh, your target market and, and simply ask them why and use it as a conduit to, um, 
to sort of getting to the heart of the matter. And that way, when you're really getting in front of users, um, your actual users, and maybe with your research team, um, you'll have more uh, succinct questions and, and a more succinct idea of, of where you might go um, with those questions. But I don't think that you need a research team to be able to talk to users. Um, there's an old adage, I think Steve Blank said um, in his book, which is get out of the building. Um, I, I wholeheartedly agree. Get out of the building, talk to people. Yes, sometimes we don't realize how uh, insular our vision has mm -hmm. become. And literally just by going out of the building, <laughs> just looking yeah. around the side can provide us with just that shift in perspective to get our brains going in a different way. And I know we're definitely gonna get more into that in the next yeah. Uh, webinar in the series. So I don't want to go too far on that because that is, it is also a topic very close to my heart as well. So I know that I can, <laughs> I can dive deep into that. Um, one last question, okay. which is, it's kind of a combination question. Two things that product managers are very often responsible for are vision and prioritization. Mm -hmm. uh, so especially for example, say I go out and I talk to all these customers and I have this list of needs that I've identified and maybe it's mm -hmm. 10 to 15 needs. How do I use that to inform those other things that people generally expect of me as a product manager? Uh, okay, what do you mean by those other things that? The vision and the prioritization are specifically what have come up in the questions. Um, okay. You know, because a lot of times you'll hear the product manager owns the vision and sets the roadmap and, mm. um, you know, and that I think can sometimes lead to that solution thinking, right? If I own the vision for this product, then I need to be able to talk about it in detail and, and, um, and yeah, and that can sometimes lead away from, from lead to solution thinking rather than problem thinking. Um, and then of course, prioritization. If you have all of these problems, how do you pick the first one to start on? Sure. So I, I think the, um, the answer to the question is really about getting outside of the um, sort of the buzzwords and the buzz phrases, I guess, that we're used to hearing as product managers, like that we're the CEO of the product, uh, which um, he is, uh, the, the gentleman who wrote that has even said that, don't say that anymore. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, it's really getting outside of, of all of those things and realizing what we are here to do is to help our team move forward. So it's about helping our team come up with a solution. And so what does our team need to be able to come up with a solution? And um, I think, and, and I think you Christy, think this too, which is they really need to understand what problem they're solving to be able to come up with um, a solution to, to frankly solve that problem. Um, and so, um, I don't like the word prioritization. Um, a, everybody has their own priorities and it's based on their own motivating factors, right? Like I might want to get um, uh, promoted or get a raise or something like that. And our users, they want to be able to do this thing and our stakeholders might want to earn more revenue or they might want to get a raise. Um, and so everybody has like their own personal motivating factors, which cause them to to choose different priorities. And so I like to use the word ordering. Um, we're, it's really about ordering the work that we're doing um, because everything's a priority to someone. And so um, how do you choose which one to do first? There's a lot of different things and this I think comes from experience being able to really make this um, decision. Um, and it, there, are, there are tools that will help you get experience. But the key is, to you need to look at okay are there dependencies are there actual technical dependencies that if i don't do this thing it is impossible for me to do this other thing it is literally genuinely impossible for me to move forward and do this thing um okay so then you might do this other thing um first or um what which one's the riskiest meaning if you haven't tested this thing out or you haven't proved that this particular problem is real you haven't put something out there into the world and gotten um, data back about it being it being true. Um, the whole rest of what you're working on um, is sort of a house of cards and will, and will fall. Um, and so I think, like I said, it really comes from experience and the way you get experience is by doing it, which means how do you 
do it so you get enough experience to move forward, it means you need to release. And it doesn't mean release full-fledged real products out there into market all the time. It means putting things in front of users and getting data back. And so it might be something small and it might be something cheap, uh, but it, it, it's putting something out there and releasing and getting data back. But the more we stay insular and just build, 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 um, the more it all becomes about our own opinions uh, and our own, uh, our own motivating factors about, about things to move forward. And we really need to make sure that we're moving forward with our users' motivating factors and, and solving their problems. Awesome. Well, that takes our time. So I really Great. want to say thank you to everybody who posted questions. I'm sorry that we weren't able to get to all of them. Some of them were honestly a little bit outside of my purview. I think there's some great questions about Globant and where we're going internally. Um, that I just don't have the answer to right now, but <laughs> I am putting Trisha's and my email addresses in the chat window. It's Christy.stone and Trisha.Servanen at Globant.com. Um, if you have any other questions and want to reach out to us, we are more than happy to connect. It's what we love to do. We love people, obviously, or we wouldn't be in this role, as Trisha alluded to a lot. Uh, a lot of product management just has to do with dealing with people and making decisions, <laughs> uh, which can probably be said of a lot of roles, but I think that standing at the intersection of the customer, the development team, and the business, we really get it from all angles. So yeah. for everybody who is inspired to be a product manager or to learn more about this kind of approach, we welcome your, your feedback and comments. We would also love to see you at our next webinar, which is on February 28th at the same time, uh, making the most of user interviews. So that's going to be more of a conversation between Trisha and I about one of our favorite topics, which is how do we talk to people and really understand them. So once again, thank you everybody for spending some time this Wednesday morning with us. We really appreciate it. And we hope to see you again soon.